look at that thing of rare beauty right there. Good morning, it is another day of working in the shop. We are working on the Bombi. And we got some stuff in over the weekend. What did we get? We got a whole bunch of these tire guides. We got a section of tracks. So we got to figure out which ones work, weld it together and send it back to the guy. So we've got some figuring to do. We've got to look at the old tracks and see what they are and look at these new tracks and see what they are and then do some calculating. Look at this thing. This is one of our new dry sprockets and it's aluminum, so it's super light and super strong. That's huge. The old ones were tiny compared to that thing. We're gonna be cooking. So what are you gonna do about the gearing? Well, we theoretically stayed the same because we guessed, but we didn't. So maybe it'll be the same. Who knows? That's the beauty of the Ford 9 inch. It's easy to swap out the ring and pinion. Okay, so this, this could be eight on six and a half, but it's probably not. Oh, it's, you're looking good. Man, it is, it's eight on six and a half. That's your center right there. That's the right height. So let's go look at the track. Ow. I don't know how many times I've done that. Rhett, will you take these mirrors off? I'm tired of getting beat up by them. Oh, these are only 29. She's one inch wider. Yeah. That's not the final thing. He could make yeah. them narrow if you want to keep them 29. Well, I think I do. I think I want to to do it to match this yeah check out the difference between these this is the old gear that we had on this is the new one it's huge so what this does is this puts more of the bars engaged in the teeth so that you can pull harder without tearing the tracks apart we never tore the tracks apart with these you did have tracks come off. What caused that? Oh, that. So we had the one of the foam-filled rubber tires explode, Ow. and when it exploded, it took all. It was the back one, and it took all the tension off the track, and it was just a nightmare. So this is huge. We're gonna have way more tooth engagement with our track. We're gonna have a way bigger engine. This thing will be a monster when it's done. It'll be a killer bee. Hey, Tom, this fan's good. I want to put this on the Morver and see if it. Oh yeah, that's see a stock it, fan. See if it gets rid of some of that, that wingy, wingy noise. Yeah. Well, look at that. So this is taking longer than I thought it was going to because they can only compact a foot and then it has to come and be tested. And then they compact another foot and it has to be tested. And sometimes the people who test it can't come here every day. So I'm a little bit bummed about that because we got the building coming. It's going to be here in two weeks and it's going to be setting right here in our way. And if that's not done, we can't start you know, what do they do with Legos? Stacking them. These are a different setup. So our tire guides bolt on here. So we can run the rubber right up to the tire. But these tire guides don't. They weld on to the cleat. I think this is all mild steel. None of this is going to get used. When he makes it, it's going to be chromoly. Ooh, that would be nice. And then they, they weld them up and then they heat treat. And this is a dual season track. You can run this winter and summer. Well, this is what they call their summer track. And you're just going to try it in the winter? We're not doing Alpine stuff. We're doing snowmobile trails, tracks that are like right off the road. So having like some drove a Subaru really on. deep tread doesn't make any sense. Those ones that we have are too aggressive I for know. what we did. Yeah. So we're only going to gain just over two inches with these, with these tracks. And that means the bombie goes up two inches from where it is. If it was sitting in here on track, it would be two inches taller. All right. So you don't want these to be snug on the tire. If it's snug on the tire, the bottom of the tires bulge out and then, then the sidewall. So these ones are, you know, there's a little bit of clearance here. This is the narrowest one we have. But if they're under here, let's roll it up on there. Okay. See how that the sidewall is rubbing it right there? That's a friction point that adds heat. And in the snow, it might not be a problem, but since we're planning on doing these, using these for uh, summertime use, that is a problem. So, so it's a much more minimal rubbing. It's gonna be close. More of a guide than a hugger. Yeah. You want so, the next one up or you still like that one? Well, yeah, I think this is the one we want. Okay. But these tires only have 10 pounds in them. They're, we're gonna be running 20, 20 pounds. Let's air these tires up. Okay, we're not hardly touching, we're not hardly touching. 
I think that's the one right there. It doesn't matter if they touch, it matters how hard they touch. You might want to run lower PSI than normal, so we're getting a little bit of suspension out of this thing, whereas we have no like travel in the axles. We'll get a little with our tires. Emphasis on little. Uh, these just came in, a little ice for the Bombi. Ooh. Are those race lines? Yeah. Uh, we got these wheels all mounted up. I like them, but Raceline was like, no way, we're not gonna let you run those. So they sent us these. It's a good looking wheel. Is this the same wheel we have on the off-road trailer? Yeah. All right. So we're going to replace all of these wheels? Mm-hmm. Oh my heavens. I'm not getting anywhere, am I? But this time we're gonna do it with a machine. Oh, phew. All right, so I was I worried we had a dismounting. A demount, a tire removal competition, but no. I was ready for my redemption. I was, I was coming back for you guys. Okay, Lizzie, suit up. I must reiterate, these are not part of the tracks. In fact, they're never gonna be any part of any track. This is all mild steel. This is simply a guide. And then we're gonna check it to see if it fits. If it fits, then we send it back to the shop and they make us the real tracks based on these dimensions. It's gonna be a little bit of an upgrade in track technology from the original Bombi tracks of these. Tom, let's fit this. Oh, that's close, man. Way too close. Too close, huh? Too close. So is a half inch going to be enough? I think one, two, three quarters of an inch. We could go in a full inch and get lots of clearance in there. Okay, we're going to call our track guy and we're going to tell him what we found. And then he's going to explain to us why we're wrong. And he's going to tell us what's right. So you can yeah. see what I was talking about, how Sounds this good. won't be dragging down in the snow because the belt's right here. And this wraps up around the tire, like so. Oh, that is gonna be just vicious. We found out a lot of good stuff. We got a lot of information transferred to the right places. They're gonna send us a drawing of what the final track looks like. We're gonna approve it and then they're gonna make it. It was really nice to have actual parts to test fit on this thing. That was super helpful. I was thinking these back brakes, they're just gonna constantly have snow falling on it. So we're gonna have to get a brake pad that's got excellent like wet weather. Cause it's gonna be wet so all the time. All the time, yeah. Well, your old brakes were wet all the time as well. They were boiling though. All right, we had a really good day. I'm very excited for the direction that the Bombi build is taking. It is just rolling right along like a freight train. Like a Bombi on tracks. Yeah. So I will not be back tomorrow. Jamie and I are helping with a youth group up on the mountain. We're gonna be doing some rappelling and some skeet shooting and other stuff swimming. I don't know. So we get to do whatever we want because you're gone? All right, I don't like the sound of that. Every time I leave Tom unattended, he buys something and brings it into the yard and says, hey Matt, I need you to sign this check. Right here, check those out. But that stuff is amazing, so we're gonna check out the classifieds tonight. So I will be back like this. And I'm gonna be back like this. That's been buying one Corvair a week. So this sand rail is Corvair powered and I think that counts. All right, it's a new day and we're working in the shop. Matt's off at a youth camp. So it's just us here today and we're working on the Bombi. Right now we gotta figure out what kind of seats we wanna put in this thing. So we're gonna take some measurements and then we are gonna check out the website and see what kind of customization we can do and pick these seats out. Like Tom said, we're up here with the youth group. We've got activities for three days. Uh, the first one this morning is skeet shooting. That's what we're doing right now. We used PRP seats in the Wrecker. They're awesome. I think they're my favorite seats in any vehicle that we have. So we're gonna use PRP seats here again. So we're gonna go check out their website and pick out the colors and the size and then get them coming. Yellow. Oh yeah. And then we that. put some gray in there. Gray? Okay. And then have the rest Piping black. color. Did Piping's we... like the little, the little round parts on the edges in between stuff. 
Did we get Yellow. full permission to just design the seats however we want? Well, permission's a funny word. Look at these There things. we go. That looks good. Okay. We picked out our seat colors and now it's time to send it into PRP. They also make custom bench seats, so we're gonna send them the dimensions and these colors. All right, so we have to lift this up and take off all the tires so we can put the race line rims on. <laughs> Jake and I are here at Hurricane Tire Pros because we bought these new goosenecks for the ability to haul the off-road wrecker because we needed a bigger trailer. Well, we had non-stop issues with the existing tires that were on the trailer. So we're here to get them all swapped out for some nice mile stars because we've been running those mile stars on our other trailers without issues. And when I say non-stop issues, in the two months we've owned these trailers, we've blown three tires. Three. Yep. We have never blown a mile star tire. Tires and wheels are all removed and loaded up, ready to go. I gotta go use a machine this time to slap these wheels on. So the next thing is grabbing lunch at the park and then snow cone. How, the, how are they? And look who's here, Rudy. And look what he brought, the Ram Charger. All right, so I just picked this up, up from Flog. And as of right now, these are the only pieces that we can load in. There's two of these that we can load in. You can also weld this in. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that goes with this. Okay, just gonna weld it in. So now we are getting ready to do what's called the Via Ferrata. I guess it's a thing where you climb up and you rappel down. Are you guys excited for this? Yeah! All right, we're doing this. We're climbing straight up this wall. They put these rebar steps in, and then you got this safety cable on the side here, and you just kind of, that's straight. We're climbing straight up. How's it going, Jamie? Good. This is super fun. The view is beautiful. It is beautiful. I regret saying yes to this. No, you don't. I'm scared. This is my niece, Addie. She's crushing it. You're crushing it. All right, we're about halfway up this first climb. We've got Joelle here. It's a little, little nerve wracking, but she's crushing it. Jamie's back there. Hi, Jamie. Hi, guys. This is pretty freaky. All right, good job, Jamie. Yeah, Woo. Part of that was upside down. It felt like it at once. I got something for you. You're welcome. You're pretty snazzy in your climbing glasses. <laughs> hey, that's looking good, man. It's all coming together. Thanks. Wonder how Jake's doing. He ran out on some errands. Let's check in on him. All right, you guys. So I got the transmission. This is a turbo 350 for the Bombi. We're taking it over here to St. George Transmission and Automotive over here in St. George. This is the same shop that we took the banana and that transmission's still running strong. So I'm staring at this, trying to figure out how we can lift them and move them around. And I've got a, I've got some attachments that bolt onto the heads that have nice lift rings, but I always worry about cracking these plastic intake manifolds when you've got a chain or a wire sling or something running up against them. So I want to make like a spreader bar that has like a chain that comes straight down that I can lift off the middle of that and swing this thing around and not worry about breaking anything. So we're going to do that. So apparently there was two ways to get down. We chose the one with three repels instead of just one big one. Otherwise, you'd still be up there waiting. Yeah, there's just too many people to do the other one. Well, that brings us to the end of our rock climbing repelling adventure. What's next? Ice cream! Woohoo! If you ever find yourself in the Orderville Glendale area, stop in at Archie's, order yourself a delicious Fab Rats burger or whatever you want. Everything's good here. <laughs> and if we kill you, we'll take care of you. Oh, that's right. It's funny because it's true. World Cup. Jake brought the wheels back to us, so now we're gonna put them back on the bombie. What do you think? Wheels are looking good. You like them? Yes. 
I approve. Two thumbs up. Although I am a little sad that the wheel I mounted won't be on here, but it's okay. All right, we decided to stop at the Belly of the Dragon on the way back to camp. So one thing that's really neat about a little feature like this, it's got a geothermal air conditioning system. So it's nice and cool, even though it's crazy hot outside, it's just amazing in here. All right, it is a new day working in the shop today. We've got the engine here that we're gonna be putting in the Bombi. This is an aluminum LS engine, so it's a little bit lighter, tons of power still, it's gonna be perfect. It's got all this stuff on it, all the wiring harness and things that we don't need, so we're gonna be removing all that. But first I wanna get it on an engine stand, which I just picked up, this stand, so I need to put that together. When we get the engine stand together, I built this yesterday, because when we put the engine on the wrecker, it was a little too sketchy, man. I was afraid somebody was gonna get crushed by that thing. Keep coming. So I made this, we can pick this thing up, we can stick it on the engine stand and later use it to put them in the Bombi. So we'll get this together and go to the next step. Good morning. We are hiking out to a place called Observation Point. We've got the whole group here with us. How long far is this hike, a mile? This hike is a one mile. mile times three. If you've never been on like a young woman's youth group, tour group hike, type thing. It's noisy. Noisy. It's noisy, he says. You're not wrong. But it's fun. It's working! It's working! It's working! We have got everything we need to do this except the bolts. Of course they don't come with the engine stand because every engine is different. They don't know what you're putting on here. So I gotta go chase down some 10 millimeter bolts, 100 millimeters long. We'll go find those and be back. All right, we're not quite to the observation point, but there's a little look off here. Wow. All right, we're really close. We'll show you the, the view from observation point here in a minute. Okay, so I'm out here in the shop. Nobody else is in here. They're doing other stuff. Probably about a year ago, my dad cut into the handle of this cart and kind of not safe, so I'm just gonna fix that right now. Okay, so I just got that done. It's not perfect, but you can slide your hand across without cutting it, so that's good. I got the bolts now, let's try this again. All right, we're up here. They say I look like a farmer because I got this. And this. How beautiful is it up here? This is just it is amazing. Gorgeous. We've rescued over a dozen people from the trailhead to this trail. Jane? Even I have rescued someone from Observation Point. Yeah. All the advice I can get is helpful. You did amazing. But I've never hiked out here. So it's just beautiful. It's incredible, incredible country here. There's Angel's Landing right there. Oh, it goes Spring Dells down there. We live just down there on the other side of that. Oh, wow. This doesn't look very bad down here, but here's some scale. It's like we're standing there looking down there. We've got two kinds of people in the group. The kinds of people that are staying back up there. <laughs> and then the ones we have to keep peeling off from the edge, including Jamie. <laughs> this engine stand's gonna work great for us. I'm gonna strip this thing down, take all the wiring harness, a bunch of hoses off, everything that we're not gonna use. So I'm gonna get it stripped down. Ed, you wanna give us a weather report? Yeah, it's hot as heck. No cloud in the sky, 105, supposed to be 110 by Sunday. So we're done here for the day. When we come back, Matt will be with us. It's gonna come like this. You wanna help me? All right, it is the last day of camp here. Girls are breaking down their tents and putting stuff up. We got delicious breakfast going on right here. Look at this, they got pancakes and pancakes. 
Bacon's bacon. Done. A big old pile of bacon. It's been a good, man, it's been good. How many days? Three days? Four. We're on day four. We're on day four. So awesome. Best girls camp ever. Can I get a wobble one? Wobble one! All right, I am back from the youth camp. I am here to inspect the work that my guys did while I was gone. Satisfactory. <laughs> We're moving on to the axle now. Engine's all stripped and ready to go. But this axle is in pieces. And I've always wanted to do a really cool unboxing video of all the Yukon parts we have, but... We never I guess, do. I get so excited when they come in, I open them all. So, it's too late. So here's the thing. We want this as light as possible. So we got the aluminum third member here. Crazy strong, super light, beautiful. It's a shame that we're going to be burying this under a floorboard. Why aren't we running a locker, Matt? Oh, why aren't we? Because this has brake-based steering. So that means we need to be able to apply the brakes to one wheel and the differential will be like, oh, I guess I'll just send my motion through this side. If we oh. ran a locker, it would only go straight. So here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to open a can of worms. An open differential always splits torque equally between both axles, no matter what. If one wheel's in the air, spinning, the other one's on the ground, not spinning, both axles are receiving exactly the same amount of torque, minus frictional losses in the bearings. But we're not going to get to that. Those are so tiny. It doesn't matter. If you Huge ever can of worms, man, there's going to be a lot of comments on that one. I know. So, because you hear this all the time, people are like, if you have an open differential, you only have one wheel drive. And the answer is no, oh, wow. you're still two wheel drive. It is a true two wheel drive. Now that we've stirred them all up, what are we going to do? Now that we I smack the, the old hornet's nest. Ah! Ah! Okay. So there's a couple things we need to do today. One, we need to get this located in the Bombi. Okay. And we need to get this located in here. All right, so build the third member and bolt it in. Yes. Let's split into two equal but opposite teams where All right. you start getting everything ready to set this up. So we'll move this over here and okay. then me and Rhett are gonna push the Bombi in here All right. and start tinkering. Okay, I'll move back there so you can get the bomb in. Here I illustrate the one of the advantages of a Ford 9-inch. They weigh nothing and they're crazy strong. Like These are equal in strength. Oh, another can of worms. These are comparable to a Dana 60 in strength. The, the ring gear may actually be stronger, but you can just pick them up and move them around. Okay, so Hefe wants to know how this works. I'll tell you. Horsepower comes in here. You stuff it right in there. It goes in here like, what do I do? I've got no choice but to go out, and it goes out. To the wheels. I don't mean to get oh, all technical. Get I don't mean to get all technical on you, but that's how it works. Did that answer your question, Hefe? No. <laughs> Come, on. Come on, Max, get in. Good job. What do you think, Max? Is that fun? Right there. I'm gonna lift this up in the air and then we're gonna start fitting the plates and the axle and all that stuff. So Tom's gonna to approve it before we do anything. Everybody knows Tom must approve it or we don't do it. At least today. We'll be able to smash that into things. Spider gears, spider gears, nobody knows who you are. Let me bring you to this point here. So the point here is to, we got to put all this structure back because we, we did a lot of damage structurally cutting this other gearbox out. So we've got to put that all back in and in the right place. Once again, we find ourselves cutting new grass. I haven't seen anybody ever do this before and there's no manual and I can't go to YouTube and be like search like how to put a Ford 9 inch in a Bombi that's been heavily modified already. No, nobody's made that video. So I get it own. though. I get it. Cutting new tracks. Uh, he can't hear me. <laughs> cutting new tracks. You said cutting new tracks. 
It was a pun, right? Tracks, bombing tracks? Yeah, totally was. All right. Brett? Yeah. We're cutting new tracks. He's using my stuff. <laughs> I'm stealing your material. We're gonna find out how strong these spider gears really are, I guess, because... They're gonna be working hard in yeah. there, because this is our steering. This is how a differential works. These things are super cool, but very misunderstood. Side gear, there's one on the other side. Axle shaft comes, it comes out. in here, you stuff it right in there. It goes in here, it's like, what do I do? I've got no choice but to go out, and it goes out. The moral of the story is, differentials are super cool. When I was growing up, I heard everything that differentials transfer power to the inside, or they're like, oh, the differentials always put power to the right rear. No. But I'll tell you what does happen. When you launch the drive shaft spinning this way against resistance, it lifts the axle and it un unloads that tire. But both wheels are getting the equal amount of torque, which effectively makes the same amount of, they're contributing 50-50 to the motion of the car going forward. Equal Tom keeps correcting energy. me because I say energy and he says energy is a result of work times mass equals force divided by the rotation of the earth. But really what I mean is torque. We're going to beat this dead so. horse till you understand. <laughs> so if you were to take a torque measurement inside the axle on a differential, it would always be effectively equal on both sides, regardless of what was happening. There you have it. Now you know. I'm going to think of another way to beat this dead horse. I'll be back. Hey, wait, wait, wait. What? How's a posse work? It just does. How's that play fit on the axle? The one that's cut out? I haven't looked at it. Let's look. Pretty close. We can make that, that. work. Yes, this is the right way. And it's just going to be that's minor, cool. minor work. Tom did this. Shucks. Okay, Rhett. It's time for the next portion of our little game, and that is to hold the axle up and look at it. We're going to have to make some custom pieces for this. Hey! What's up? What are you up to? We're working on this. Well, there's blue steel. Oh, look at blue steel. So, remember you saying something about these bullhorns. Did you want those cut off? Yes. Yes. All right, thanks, Robbie. That is really close to the height that I want the sprocket. We got seven and three eighths centimeters of clearance right there. 2.54 centimeters. We got two and nine sixteenths centimeters of clearance right there. I don't know if that's enough. I mean, they don't move. There's no movement other so than with one inch. One other inch than flex. Well, and that's the question, because this is super easy to slide forward. Yeah, you could get another inch. Yeah, and we'll just wrap around this with some custom little pieces. Yeah, and then plate it all in back there. Yeah. Well, let me set up some precision measurements, and then... Oh, you're getting crazy on me yep. here. You got and the then hole. you can keep working on that while I build myself some precision measurements. Measurements. Mosier. I'm going to use every vowel in the word measure until I get it right. Measurements. Okay, Rhett, I think we have a plan here. Let's quit bothering Tom because he's actually being productive today. I made a thing. This is chair stuff, Tom. This is all for a secret project. Nobody's allowed to look in here. Their junk is pretty nice. Rubber's one inch thick, so it's pretty close. Right there? Yeah, that's what. That's where you want to be, so we need to go up. Up. That's how you're lighting this thing up. Yeah. So this is the center line. Right here. So it's pretty close to right there. All right, we're not going to bore you with all the measuring on this. So uh, we'll come back when it's in the right position and we'll show you something super cool at that point. I'm gonna finish putting this thing together and spare you the details as well, and we'll just show you the final product. We've got the roll, pitch, and yaw all figured out, but we don't know what the dive's gonna be. 
Okay, you need to be able to slide this under here. I can clearly see we were a little over zealous with our pinion angle. That's okay, it's just tacked on. Right? Yeah. How's that? Okay, that represents our flange we don't have yet. This represents the sprocket that we do have. So that's about what it's gonna look like. That means all this structure under here has to be moved and we'll wrap it around here. There's going to be a, there's going to be a, a very light heavy duty bumper that's also the structure and a place to hang lights on the front of this. We're about two and a quarter inches high by calculations, which is exactly where we need to be. This thing is all together and ready to go. We've got Yukon differential, we got Yukon gears. We've got a Yukon housing going in our Ford 9 inch. We use Yukon gears and axles in our stuff and we have for years. If you want Yukon gears and axles in your stuff and you want to save money, tell them what they can do, Tom. Go to randysworldwide.com, use the coupon code MORE, M-O-R-R, -R, for 10% off your order. That's a heck of a deal for a heck of a good product. Heck, just go do it. What, what's going on above Sally right now? Oh, we did it! Who did that? Some awesome, I don't know. Did you do that? Are you messing with me? Who hung it? Jake? Jake did. Red? I found it while cleaning. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. It's, and, and that sign is mostly true. It is Tom Tom's drill, Miss Sally. And Matt Very, secretly I, loves it. I do. I secretly love it. I've tried to use it a couple times, and it wasn't plugged in. It made me angry. Oh, yeah. He was seriously upset about it. All right, I want you to just look at that. Look at that thing of rare beauty right there. It's a rare thing of beauty. It's a thing of rare beauty, and I'm just super happy with it. We got a bunch of stuff welded on it. Rhett got a bunch of stuff done. Tom has been working laboriously on this all day long. Not really, though. He did it in like an hour. Then I went out for smoothies. We came here. Progress was made. This project's moving along. Thanks for watching. The nectar.